Okay, go ahead. Hi, I'm John. I'm here to talk about um, proper use of spill kits uh, in the Seattle city limits uh, due to the federal uh, Clean Water Act. The city needs to stay in compliance in order to receive its permits for the... Uh, should I just be talking to you or to yeah, the camera? Yeah, okay, I'll just talk to you. The city needs to stay in compliance with the Federal Clean Water Act. Uh, and in an effort to make that happen, we're giving out these free spill kits to businesses. You can have up to two through this program, and I can bring a second one in if you'd like. These are meant to curtail those small amounts of contaminants that end up getting in the bodies of water. And that's where the bulk of the pollution coming into Puget Sound and the Duwamish River in your case come from are small contaminants, small amounts of contaminants. It's not big 50 gallon dumps, it's you know a little bit of bleach, it's a little bit of Everything ammonia. Everything in the Soto District goes to the Duwamish. Everything in the Soto District, there's a few little quirks, but yes, for the most part it goes okay. to the Duwamish River. In fact, in your case, it definitely goes to the Duwamish River, okay. and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, these are storm drains. These are exactly what we want to uh, preserve. Nothing but rain should go down here. No other liquids, no other solids. That includes dirt as sediment impairs the way those drains work. Uh, oils uh, can get into the storm drain if the sediment gets up too high. And any sediment that gets in the river ends up creating a bigger problem for the critters that live there. Have we identified all the drains on our property? I have a site map that will show okay, you that. Perfect. Yeah. And we can walk through after we get done? Please. Absolutely, okay. yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, the biggest and most important thing to maintaining proper drains is A, don't use your uh, hoses as a broom. Sweep up, bag that stuff and throw it away. Occasionally something needs to be cleaned up and we get that, but it's really important that for the most part everything on site happens with a broom and a dustpan. So to paraphrase, what you're mm -hmm. saying is if we have debris mm -hmm. that we're creating, let's first try to clean it up and not hose it down the drain. Correct. Okay. We Absolutely. Absolutely. Also, these are both really simple measures. Close your dumpsters or your trash cans. Because anything that's in a trash can or a dumpster, they nev they're never leak proof. There's always some leak coming out. And anything that's in that trash that gets water on it, the contaminant can get through the water, get through a small leak, and it gets un end up down the storm drain. So the, it's a really simple and cost effective way to help preserve the water quality in this area okay. just by closing up your dumpsters. Um, I've created a spill plan for you. Um, this should be posted wherever this lives. This is, it's a great place, it's a great thing to keep a, a, a dedicated space somewhere in your facility where all employees can know where they'll find a spill kit. And if you're gonna have them go out with them in the field, um, make sure that they have um, uh, access to these numbers and I can give you more copies of the spill plan for every truck if you okay, need that. thank you. Sure. Um, and this, it's laminated too. It is laminated, yeah. It's a great thing to post on a wall. Um, if you, if you take a look at this, it just gives you uh, a bunch of checks on fluids that might end up going down the storm drain based on the work that you do here. Um, this isn't necessarily everything. So if somebody spills coke, they should probably clean it up. Um, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, if they spill some ammonia, which isn't on here, that should definitely get cleaned up before it gets to the storm drain. And I'll show you how to do that when we look at this. This is your site map. Um, and this is a two-sided uh, item. And I'll show you the back in a moment. The pink right here is the laminated site map, the site property right here. Um, this is you. The dark blue are your storm drains. The green are the um, sanitary sewer lines. And all the little blue dots on there are storm drains. There's some right out in front. There's some up the road right over here. Anything that goes into the storm drains are going through these blue lines all the way out here to the Duwamish River. Although this is just a portion of the Duwamish River. That's Harbor Island. Um, Anything in this uh, yellow map right here, or the yellow highlighted portion of the map, drains to the Duwamish. These areas right here go to the combined sewer, but that's not really relevant for this conversation. That is your site right there. Um, because of the water quality in the Duwamish River, it's really important that we keep all the small spills cleaned up now because it's a super fun site and they're going to start cleaning it up soon and it's billions of dollars required to clean that river up because of years of industry. We want good economies. The city needs good businesses to feed it with tax revenue. People need good businesses to feed them through their paychecks. We want businesses to exist, but we also need to make sure that these waterways stay clean, and that's the biggest reason why that um, river is as polluted as it is now. So both of these would be great to post on the wall somewhere near a spill kit. 
Um, and like I said, I can get you some of these. This is not going to be important to field staff, but this probably would be. Okay. Um, also on here is a list of telephone numbers. As good neighbors, you should probably know that if you see somebody spilling something on the street, it's not your job to clean it up. Certainly go out and help if you can, but the least you can do is call the Department of Transportation or Seattle Public Utilities and let them know that that happened uh, as soon as possible. Anything that happens here on site that you need, you have questions of how to dispose of once you've used the spill kit, you can call the hazardous waste line here um, and the water quality hotline. Both of them can help you with that. And so those numbers are here on the site. It also has a list of telephone numbers. It's your telephone number. Okay. Uh, who should be notified uh, within the company should it still happen. So we'll get on to the spill kit itself. Um, as I said, John, I get two of these. If you want an extra one, I'll bring one in right now. These do not have the standard opening top. They have a latch. You can push this latch in. Can you see that? Yep. And then turn. If you don't, it's like a medicine bottle and it will not open. You can also pop these off with a screwdriver if you don't want that latch, but having that latch makes it really handy for disposing of hazardous materials. So I would recommend you keep it on because it's a handy bucket with that latch on. Once you've opened it up, you'll find this really great to post on a wall. Redundancy is a helpful thing. Even though that sticker appears on the front here, it's good to have this on the wall where you know people, once you need to replenish this, you know where to put it. Um, should you spill something particularly nasty and you can't stand the smell or don't want it touching your skin, this comes with goggles and with rubber gloves or latex gloves. It also comes with a drain puller. I mentioned this. Um, these are really handy when you need to open up storm drains. Awesome. What you do with this, you slide it between uh, the rails here, lift out. Easy to do? It sounds very easy, doesn't it? They're very heavy. They're oftentimes... Do you know how to do it? I, I can, but it's not something that the city really wants us to do on a regular basis. They just okay. leave it intact. If there's no need to, to seal it off, leave it intact. They are heavy. A lot of times, you can see in this photo, there's debris that has moved, that has settled inside of this, um, uh, 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 right here between the, the, the drain and the, and the rim that it sits in. Wet and dry and wet and dry, it ends up uh, uh, getting pretty hard in there. It can be hard to, to pull it out. You have to use some strength. But it is heavy, those drains are deep. Also, have somebody to help you because you don't want that drain to fall in the hole. Since it's relevant to us, mm -hmm. can we walk out there? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, grab, grab the train, okay. If you need storm something you should um, so drain definitely needs to be cleaned out. Um, I can see the water and that means it's not draining out. So this is essentially a sealed off drain um, and it's probably on the city street. Well, it might not be. This is a quirky street. Like I said, the difference between street and, and, and parking lot is grayed here. Um, let's do this. Come in here and you'll pull out. It is heavy and it's best to do this from the center um, because if you get it from one side, it tips over, that's when it can fall in. Once you've lifted that up, show you the evidence. If it's
storm drain, um, you want to buy yourself some time maybe to, in order to clean that storm drain out. This kit comes with two little cloths. They can be, um, they can overlap each other. Um, they can be put between lines. They can wrap the entire drain. They can wrap the entire fill. You can literally just buy you some time in order to kind of like seal it and, and clean it up around the neck. Um, so you can put two of these cloths on each other. There are a significant number of absorbent pads. These are the ones you bring in with the absorbent pads. The ones you don't need are the ones that go on the front block and attach to it. Um, you can use these if you want. When you have just filled your tank and your stock and your storm drain is completely sealed up, you're ready to use, it's best to use these pads from the exterior of the wheel. So don't lay them in the center. Put those pads in the center where you see the soap. Start at the exterior and work these pads in. Um, as you lay the exterior out, let the next row go in and work the soap and all that stuff in. Once you've absorbed that, we have your small intoxicants and your effective pads. Um, bag up on.